Time for another episode of AA Illustrates. In this episode, we're gonna be talking all about migration. And specifically, we're gonna do a demo of moving from version 11 to Automation 360 on-prem. And we're gonna show you all of the steps of that process. You can watch me as I migrate bots and migrate my environment from version 11 to Automation 360 using some virtual machines. And I'm gonna show you some of the tips and some of the tricks. I've done this multiple times. So hopefully this will help you along your migration path. Now. Before we get too deep into that, I do wanna talk about some of the different options if you're a V11 or V10 customer looking to migrate to Automation 360. So there's technically three flavors here. The first in the far left is a pure cloud Automation 360 environment. Now, this has its own video, so if, you, if you're interested in going that way and you wanna watch how to do an installation that way, uh, we have another video for that, but this is a fully hosted and managed Automation Anywhere enterprise cloud environment. Your control room is in the cloud. Your data and your database is securely in the cloud. Your product updates are also on cloud. So this is a pure cloud experience. In the middle here, we have a cloud enabled environment. And in this way, your data and infrastructure and your management functions are local and your data stays local, but there is a cloud control room component to that. And so it's kind of a, a hybrid where your data, your database, all of that is going to be local, but there is a control room component that's in the cloud as well. And it's almost like a hybrid where you're able to have some level of redundancy, some advantage of cloud, uh, though it would require that your database stay up, stay available. So you'd wanna make sure you're doing some kind of clustering with your database there. On the far right column, we have the on-prem. Uh, and in the on-prem situation, your control room is hosted in your own environment. Your database is hosted in your own environment. And then your product updates are distributed through cloud, which means that you can download those in updates from cloud and apply them to your own environment. And they're just an MSI that you would apply and that would update your uh, control room accordingly. Now, one thing I wanna add to this, and you may have seen this exact table. It's a, I took this exactly from our documentation. You may have seen this in a slide deck or something like that. One thing I wanna add to that that I think is missing here is where your bot runners live, right? Because I've talked to a lot of people where they say, well, we can't do cloud because all of our bot runners are on-prem or we can't do local because we wouldn't use cloud bot runners. The, the bot runners are totally separate from the top three rows there, right? And if you see for all three of these, I've put like a cloud slash on-prem logo. And what I mean by that is your bot runner could be on Azure or it could be on GCP or it could be some server that's in a rack in your own environment, right? Or it could be a combination of the two. So if you are using cloud or if you're using on-prem, there's really not a limitation as to where your bot runner needs to live. And it could live in a combination of the two. So most of my Automation 360 development happens on a cloud environment, but my runners, I have some that are, I've got one that's on AWS, I've got another one that's sitting in an arcade machine in the other room. So like there's lots of different ways you can have this set up. There's no issues with my local machines connecting to my cloud control room and taking tasks and running accordingly, besides them just like not falling asleep locally because that's how I set them up. But um, besides that, there's no issue with me having a bot runner locally versus having one in the cloud and it works both ways. So just keep that in mind. As long as your bot runner is able to talk to your control room, you're good with being able to send tasks to that control room and uh, a process work accordingly. Like I said though, uh, for this particular AA Illustrate session though, we're gonna be focusing on the on-prem migration. So first off, let's talk about some of the pre-work you need to do before jumping into actually doing a migration. First off is verify the migration compatibility with your version 10 or version 11. And version 11 version is what I have here. But uh, check that, I've got the link to that in the documentation or the notes below. If you wanna check your compatibility just to make sure that you're compatible with an on-prem or with a cloud migration, uh, you'll wanna check that. And again, this pre-work is really not specific to on-prem. It's, uh, it's the same process you would follow if you're going to cloud or the hybrid. Run the bot scanner utility. So the bot scanner utility is a totally separate download. You can get it from the A People download site. Again, I'll have a link for this. 
Um, but you run this utility, you run it against a copy of your uh, control room repository, and it will scan all of your bots, and it will determine the percentage of migratable bots based on the commands that you've used within your uh, ATMX files. And so it will provide suggestions for you on bots that may require additional updates or additional changes. It's gonna give you some of that detail. It's also gonna call out bots that may not be migratable. The goal is that you wanna have above 90% to be eligible for an upgrade, um, but just take note of those bots that say that there is some issue with their migration. And it might mean that you have to refactor a particular subtask or recreate a particular subtask uh, as you migrate that to Automation 360. And then the last thing that is the pre-work, and again, this happens whether you're doing on-prem or you're doing uh, cloud, is request a migration license from your CSM or from your account manager. And if it's on-prem, you just need the license itself. If it's a cloud environment, you would be requesting that environment. They'll also send you like a security token that you can use with the cloud migration utility. But again, we're covering that in more detail in a different video. All right, so let's talk about the general flow here. And again, I do have documentation references for all of this to help um, you know, further clarify some of these points so you can dig in a bit more if you're not understanding each of these points. But the number one thing we wanna do is we have to back up our version 11 control room database. And we'll want to migrate that database over to our Automation 360 environment. So whether you're doing this on the exact same server and your control room and your SQL server are all the same, or whether it's a standalone SQL server, you still want to do this backup from your V11 environment and you'll want to eventually migrate that over to your target Automation 360 environment. Optionally, you can also back up the bot insights for this as well. Uh, again, I'll have a link for that. We're not gonna cover that component as a part of this video, um, but if you wanna back up bot insights and move that data over to your Automation 360 environment, you can do that as well. I highlighted these in yellow, so it'd be like super annoyingly obvious which ones are Automation 360 versus V11 steps. So hang with me here. Uh, the other V11 step we have to do is back up the control room bot repository and credential vault. So we'll want to look on our server and copy off those files so that we can migrate them over to our Automation 360 target environment. Now, just like with the database, we want to take care of our database, we want to take care of our files in the Automation 360 target control room environment before we actually do the Automation 360 installation. That's a little bit backwards of what you would originally think, but that's the way to do it. And this is the most efficient way to do it. You'll want to copy all those files over, then do your installation. And I'll show you that full installation. It's actually considered like a custom installation. Um, and we'll, we'll do that here in a little bit. Now, on our Automation 360 environment side, the first thing we're gonna do is restore our database using the V11 backup. Again, there's gonna be links for that below. I'm gonna show you all of that. I've got um, SQL Server 2019 installed already. I don't have it fully configured, so I'll show you some of that stuff. Um, but we're gonna do a restore on the database so that we can take all of the data from our V11 environment and move that over to Automation 360. We'll also want to move bots and Credential Vault over to our default directory. And I'm gonna show you how to create that. We will use the default directory that Automation 360 would otherwise install to. If you want to customize it and have it installed to some other directory, you can still do that. You would just need to make a database change in the configuration table of the database. Again, I'll have a link for that below so you can kind of follow along with this. After we've got the bots, the DAT file, which is our credential vault, and then the uh, database backed up, and moved over to Automation 360, we'll wanna do our Automation 360 install. And we'll do that in custom mode so that we can specify exactly which database we want to install onto, and that will enable us to do an upgrade. Finally, in the Automation 360 side, we'll want to install our license and set our access URL. This is an important step so that we can make sure that all of our bot agents and our bot runners will be able to talk to our control room appropriately. And then the last thing we'll do is validate our migration and do a quick smoke test just to make sure that like the bot agent installs okay, that we're able to run a bot as a developer. Sound good? Okay, let's, uh, oh, oh, 
and then migrate your bots. Yeah, sorry, that was the last one. Uh, migrate your bots. We're gonna do another video for that because really the process of migrating your bots is the same for on-prem as it is for cloud. Once you've got your control room set up, migrating your bots is pretty much the same thing. So we'll do that in a separate video because it applies to both. All right, that was the last thing for sure. I'm gonna swap over to my V11 environment, okay? So just so that we're kind of all on the same page here, I'm gonna log in to my uh, version 11 control room and I'm logged in as an admin right now. I don't have a ton of bots in this environment. In fact, I've only got like three processes, but those processes have, in this case, a couple bots. Um, and then with this one, we've got a master bot, a subtask, and then we also have a meta bot as well. So that's referenced right here, okay? So those are the bots we're gonna be looking at. I know this is not what your control room looks like. You've got hundreds of bots. That's totally fine. I just wanna show you this process, moving this stuff over. Uh, it will be the same process, whether you have like seven or whatever bots like I do, or you've got a couple hundred, it's gonna be the same thing. Uh, for credentials, I do have a credential. Uh, it was created by my creator account, so I can't see it on my admin account. I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute though. Um, let me think what else is on here. The other thing I wanted to show is that we do have, there's a total of three users that have been created. We wanna make sure that all of those migrate over correctly. We should be able to use the same login, same credentials for those. I am using uh, the Automation Anywhere built-in login. I'm not using SSO in this case. So I'm using the Automation Anywhere authentication and I have an admin account, a runner account, and a creator account. Same should be true for my roles. Uh, I have two custom roles. One is bot creator, one is bot runner. And I have uh, just one user who is assigned to both of those. And, um, and as you can probably guess, the runner is assigned to the runner and the creator is assigned to the creator. All right, so back to our list. And I'm gonna have a reference here on my other screen because this is the helpful way that I like to review it. Um, I will put this, again, this is gonna be up for anyone here to be able to copy and go along with me. I really like using this, um, I think they call it a metro map, but I like this process of the uh, going through the documentation for a migration. I think it makes a lot of sense and it's very visual and it kind of shows you those different steps. So we're gonna start off with doing this um, backup and restoration of the database. We'll copy our repository details, we'll set up our control room, and then we'll do some other uh, kind of final work to make sure that our control room in Automation 360 is set correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to launch SQL Server Management Studio because I wanna do a backup of my database. Um, you know, in a, in a real production environment, you probably wanna do this kind of stuff on off hours when you don't have a ton of stuff going on. Uh, I wouldn't expect some of these steps to have massive impacts on your environment, but um, you'll wanna minimize those impacts as much as possible. So I would personally, if I was doing this for an organization, I'd probably try and find some off hours to do this um, just to make sure that there was no impact to anything else. Okay, so my SQL Server Management Studio is open. I'm going to connect to my database. Uh, again, this is just a SQL Express installation. Um, probably you'll be using Enterprise uh, if this is a large environment or large deployment, but uh, I am using the uh, SQL Express. Now, this is my actual control room database. These other databases for the bot insights, I'm not gonna worry about for right now. There is a separate process for backing up bot insights that is different from this. So again, we'll have that in links below, very clearly called out, but this is the process for backing up the database. If you right click on the database itself and go to tasks, and I believe it is back up right here. I'll give a location to where I wanna store this out. I'm going to, let's see, we'll choose a custom directory here. I'm gonna put it in C temp and I'm gonna name it crdb.bak. Uh, that's the backup extension file type for um, 
SQL database and I'm just named it exactly like I have here for my database name so that when I restore this and when I reference it in my installation, like I'm thinking CRDB because I'll have to reference that name later on. So again, uh, my database is relatively small, so that backup went very quickly. Yours may take slightly longer than that, that's fine. I'm just trying to show you the process here of what we need to do for the backup. So if we think back to our list of uh, stuff we need to do here, we have done the backup of the control room database. We need to now back up the control room bot repository and credential vault. So if I go to, and again, this is assuming a default install. Um, oh, not this, program data. If you do percent program data percent, that will take you to the program data directory. Uh, typically, it's a hidden folder, so if you have uh, hidden folders shown, you'll be able to do that as well. But anyway, I just have always done it this way. If your Automation Anywhere repository is in a different location, you'll want to reference that, okay? So if it's a slightly different place, that's fine. You can reference yours. Mine is a default installation, so it went to this uh, C program data. From there, I have my Automation Anywhere directory. Inside of that, I'm concerned about this server files directory. And inside of here, I have my credential vault.dat as well as my um, default directory here, which is my bot repository, right? I told you that I only have tasks and metabots here. So my my task directory has my bots and my uh, metabots directory has my single metabot. Okay? So what I'm going to do is back at this very base level here, I have default and I have credential vault. I'm going to send those to a zip. And I'm just going to call this um, repository backup. Now, for my sake, I'm going to copy those over to what I have is called shared storage here. And uh, I'll do the same thing for my database which was on C temp. There it is, I'll copy that. And I'll put both of those right here. And I'm just doing that because that's gonna be like my go-between uh, from this machine, which is on uh, VirtualBox, to my remote machine, uh, which is a VM that's hosted elsewhere. So let's get out of this machine now and go over to this one. And this is my totally clean, nothing installed besides SQL um, uh, environment right here. I'm using SQL Server 2019. The first thing I'm going to have to do, and again, I just installed SQL, so that's the only thing that's here. I did download uh, the Automation 360.23 build, just so you didn't have to watch that process. But the only thing that's been installed here is SQL Express 2019. Uh, on that fresh install of SQL. And again, this is gonna change for you. Like if you have uh, database admins at your work and they do the database stuff and you just have to worry about the automation anywhere stuff, that's totally fine. Stick with that. Uh, if you're the guy who has to, guy or girl that has to do all of it, then I'm just showing you this part so that you'll know exactly what to do. Uh, I'm gonna right click on TCP IP here and that's the protocols for SQL Express. I'm gonna go to properties I want to enable TCP IP. I also want to come down here and for my TCP port, I'm going to um, delete the value for TCP dynamic ports and I'm going to type in 1433 here for my TCP port and I'll hit OK. And it's going to give me a message that says that uh, any changes will be saved, but you have to restart the service for them to actually apply. So on this SQL services, um, tab at the top here. I'm going to right click on SQL Server Express and select to restart. That will restart the SQL Server service and uh, apply the TCP settings. Cool. So that's done. We're done with that part. Uh, let me copy those files over real quick just so we have all of that. Give me one second here. So our repository backup is right here. I'm going to have to copy that. Let's copy that, put it over here. There we go. And then the other thing was our CRDB backup. 
I'll paste that here too. Got it. Okay. Now I'm going to move the CRDB backup out of this directory and I'm going to put it into my C temp directory. Um, the reason I do that is because as you'll see here in a minute, when we um, open up SQL Management Studio, you'll see that uh, its ability to browse directories is not great. And uh, finding the user profile for downloads uh, can be challenging. Sometimes for some reason it just doesn't show it at all. I don't know why. So I always just put it in C temp or someplace that I know is like an easy to get to directory. Usually you would go to like C users, whatever your username is, slash downloads, and then you'd be able to get to what is the downloads directory for that user profile. For whatever reason, I have seen that SQL Management Studio doesn't always show that correctly. So that's why I put it in C temp. If it works for you in downloads or wherever you want to have it, that's fine. You could put it on a network drive if you need to. Uh, actually, you may not be able to do that unless you've mapped the drive because I haven't had a lot of luck with this uh, importing databases. Anyway, we're going to right click here. So this is again a fresh install of SQL Express. If you're using some other flavor of SQL, this should be a very similar process. I'm going to right click right here and select to restore database. When I restore this, I'm going to select device and I will browse out and I'm going to choose file as my media type and hit add. And I want to come down here to my C temp directory. So as you can see, this is not like the most glamorous way to browse for a file. I guess if you had a network directory, you could reference it here. Um, but if you go to C temp, there is my CRDB dot BAK. I'll hit OK and OK here. Now notice that it already found some details like, all right, this was the server. This is the database. This is a position. It's a full backup. Um, so it's obviously a valid backup. I'm going to hit OK and it is going to restore that database for me. And again, mine was super fast. It's a relatively small database. If yours is larger, that's fine. It's, it's the same process. Pause the video if you want. Uh, all right, so we've got our database here. Um, the next step, and I'm gonna leave this open for just a minute because I wanna show you one more thing. The next step we wanna do, in, and again, going back to our PowerPoint here, is we want to move our bots and credential vault to the default directory. Now, I said default directory. It doesn't have to be the default directory. I'm gonna do it that way. If you wanna do it a different way, you can, but let me explain this. So if we go to program data and look here, we don't have the same automation anywhere folder that we had on our v11 right because there hasn't been an install here yet so what i'm going to try to do is i want to replicate that directory structure here and that's why i have this um this one page up in the documentation this gives you the directory structure that you want to follow right so it's automation anywhere slash server files slash default slash automation anywhere slash bots that's the folder structure that we want to follow. And so I have this up just to make sure that I've got this exactly as it's expecting. So I'm going to start with a folder called automation anywhere in this directory, automation anywhere. I'm not putting a space because that's the way the default installer will do it. So I want to basically have this mirror what that experience is going to look like. If you're installing this in a clustered environment, or if you're installing it, let's say you have a D drive that is a NAS or that's some other network SAN storage, you could still do that with the other directory. You just put it in whatever that mapped drive is, and you can still do that. But I'm doing it in the default location. If you install it somewhere other than the default, you will have to set a configuration value, which is called your repository path. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. We're not gonna do it because I'm installing the default path. But if you go here to the configuration table within your database, and let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see. I'm sorry that you probably can't see this at all. I don't think there's a way to zoom this text. Yeah, the, the typical like control plus sign isn't working. Uh, but, but believe me here, I'll show you this. 
Um, this is the repository path, right? So this is the credential, or not a credential, I'm sorry, configuration value that is repository path is the config uh, key. Mine is expecting C program file or C program data automation anywhere server files because that's what I had used on my V11 environment and that's the default location if you just run like a normal install without customizing this. If you want to put yours in a different drive, you'll just need to update that here and I would do so before you do the installation. So update that location here to whatever the server files path is. Don't put a slash on the end. Mirror the same kind of format. Uh, we can close this. There's nothing else I need to show you here. All right, so I've got that. I want to create a server files directory. Now I kind of want to go off of what I have here for my repository backup. So let's grab this. Uh, I need to create a server files directory. So I'll go here, server space files. Inside of server files is where my credential vault dat goes. So I'll move that right over. And then inside of this, I should have my bot files as well. So I should have default. And then if you look at the path here, let me show you this one. This is the automation 360 expected location. It's server files default and then zero automation anywhere bots. So I'm going to mirror that exact same thing. I'm going to have to like destroy this one a little bit. So I have server files, I have default. Let me create the zero folder. Inside of zero, I will put automation anywhere. And then inside of automation anywhere, I want to have a folder called bots. And then I will put my two bots inside of that. There we go. And so if you haven't seen Automation 360 yet or the way that its interface looks, all of my bots go into a bots directory, right? And technically there's bots and then there's also another one for bot store if you're using that. But everything goes into bots. By setting it up in this pattern, I'm going to have a subdirectory within bots. I'll have two subdirectories, one that is my tasks, one that is my metabots. I should be able to find those once I've done the installation. They should show up normally for me. And then the control room is what's managing this directory structure from here on out. So I, I'm not manually touching this after this. I'm just setting things up for the initial installation. All right, back to our slides. One second. So, oh, this one. Uh, I've moved my bots. I've moved my credential vault to my, and in this case, default directory, but I moved it to a directory that I'm referencing. I now want to install Automation 360 in custom mode. So let's go back here to my downloads directory. Uh, I'm going to find that build. I'm going to launch this one. I'm going to right click and select to run as administrator. Uh, if you haven't done a ton of server installs, it's always a best practice to launch things as an administrator. You can help to avoid potential future issues. I don't suspect that there's any with Automation 360 here. Just speaking as experience of a guy who's had to do a lot of server installs in the past, uh, running things as admin is always a great practice. It probably references that in the documentation as well. Um, I can maybe pull that up, but I'm pretty sure it does. Now, my server is just for demonstration purposes. Notice that I don't have the suggested eight cores, nor do I have the suggested uh, 500, G, uh, 500 GB of storage. That's okay because mine's not being used for a production use case. Mine's just being used for a demo. So pay close attention to that if you are installing this for production. Make sure you're meeting those requirements, or if you're not, make sure that you know the consequences of that moving forward. There is a control room prerequisites uh, documentation piece that's super helpful and walks through all this stuff, um, but I'm gonna skip that for right now. I'll hit next. Now I'm doing an on-premises installation, so I will be uh, managing this all on my own. I'll hit accept for the terms because I've clearly read through those and hit next. Now at this point, I'm gonna select a custom install and I'm doing that because I need to reference my control room database that I just imported from my V11 environment. So I'll hit next here. This is my data logs and my installation path. Again, if you need to customize these, you can. 
Notice this should match my path that I just set up in program data. And so it's going to put other log files and things like that in that repository as well. Hit next. For my key vault, uh, I'm going to use the um, built in key store. I'm not going to be putting mine elsewhere. So I'll just leave this and hit next. Self signed certificate for me is fine because I'm just doing this as a demo. If you need to have a certificate set up for access to your control room, you can do so. You can reference that uh, certificate here. For the service account that's going to run my control room services, I'm going to leave this as a local system account. If you have specific reasons to set this to a service account, you can do so. My one key pointer there is to make sure that the service account doesn't have a password that's set to expire because that's going to make for a really bad time, right? You're going to get a 3 a.m. call that bots aren't running, control rooms down, and oh, it's because the control room account expired or you know had its password expire. So just make sure that if you're if you are using a service account here, uh, you're either changing that password manually or it's a non-expiring password. All right, for my database server, uh, because mine is local, I can select from here. If I had another database server, I could obviously reference that. And my port is notice the same that we set up for the TCP settings for my SQL server. Here is where I want to make sure that I'm using the name of my control room database that I had imported from V11. If I left this as is and it said automation 360 database, it would essentially be a fresh install. It's not going to take anything from my old database, though my bots would still work. My uh, permissions and roles and things like that wouldn't copy over. So I want this to be CRDB, which was the same uh, that we had from our old environment. Let's quadruple check that. Yeah, CRDB, just to be sure, because I don't want to screw that part up. And we'll hit next. So at this point, it's going to check to make sure that it can connect to that SQL environment and that it can find that database. Notice that I'm using Windows authentication here. If you had set up uh, authentication in a different way, again, just make sure that you have entered those details correctly. I can give an Elasticsearch password. I'm going to fill this in real quick. I have to stop talking when I'm doing passwords, otherwise I'll screw them up. If you're doing a clustered setup, um, you could establish that here. I'm not going to be doing a cluster. This is going to be a standalone. But if you are doing cluster, this is how you would set that up. And then finally, we'll hit install. And this part takes uh, a few minutes here. Again, depending on your server specs and things like that, uh, it can go faster or a little bit slower. But again, mine's a virtual machine. And as you saw, it's not exactly maxed out on the specs. So I'm going to let this install. I will fast forward this part so that you don't have to watch the entire status bars go by. Um, but it's going to go through the process of doing the installation. It's going to establish the control room services. And then it's going to start all of those control room services. OK, so our installation has finished. Um, we can now launch Automation 360. So let's hit finish here. One other point I'll make is that we originally, I think in the first go here, we had that folder open that was program data, uh, automation anywhere, server files, whatever, that final path that we created. Make sure that you close that before you run the installer. Otherwise, you can run into issues because the installer is ultimately trying to take control of that directory during the installation to create the folder structure that it's expecting for the control room. So do make sure that you close that. Otherwise, you might get an error during your installation. All right. Now, assuming all of this worked correctly, we should be able to log in with the same credentials that we were just using in V11. So I'm going to try migration admin here. I hit login. Now, I think it's going to prompt us for a license right away. I'll save this. Yeah, so it says my license has expired. I'm going to install one from a file here. I'll browse out. I had pre-moved that over to this 
um, this environment. So there, we've got the license installed. Uh, I can see my migration admin. I'm gonna check a couple things out here and then we'll be done with this, uh, this session. First off, I can see that I've got in my bots directory, uh, my my tasks is right here. There is my bot store directory, or I'm sorry, bot store directory and bot games. Bot games is where we had our actual bots. So I have like employee data migration, customer onboarding. If you did bot games, you'll obviously recognize some of these titles. All of that stuff migrated okay. Uh, and then also my metabot here. Now, notice that these are in my public directory. And this is a concept that's a little bit different from V11 because we didn't really have something that was called public the same way. In Automation 360, public is basically my checked in stuff. And that stuff is eligible for execution through scheduling or through running ad hoc and things like that. When a developer is building stuff, they would build stuff in their private directory. And so if I wanted to, let's say, make a modification to a bot, I would check that out from public. I would check it in, obviously, to private. I would make my modifications and then I would push it back up to public or I would check it back in. So we can't see that part of things here because I'm an admin and I don't have a creator license applied to this user. You can't as an admin, but I only see public here. So we're going to pay attention to that when we log in as a creator in just a moment. Uh, for my devices, I won't see anything there. My credentials, I won't see anything as this user because my credentials were created as my developer. So I'll see that there. Uh, the other thing we're going to look at is administration. So we can see that all three of our users have been moved over. Uh, and then with our roles, we can see uh, all of the standard roles. There's some new roles that you don't didn't have before, like these uh, robotic interface admin roles. These are to support Ari. Um, but I have my bot creator and my bot runner. They both transferred over. Uh, the last thing we need to do as a part of my migration is if I go to general here, what I'm going to do is copy this path up here, which is the control room URL. And I need to edit this because see where it says control room access URL? I want to update this. This was my old server name. This is my new one. So, and this can't end in a slash. That's why it won't let me hit save changes. So it has to end like that. I'll hit save changes. And now that should work. And if I don't update that, I won't be able to actually run any bots correctly. And my bot agent will have trouble actually downloading dependencies that it needs to execute. So we're good on this account. I'm going to log out of this and I'm going to log in as my bot creator. I think that's the password. Yeah. Okay, so looking at my bot creator, um, I do want to show you the credentials so we can see that. So there's my bot creator credential. Uh, inside of this, I have two attributes. So those copied over, those transferred over, okay. The one thing I wanted to make note of is that when we did that original copy and paste, right, we copied our files, which was our ATMX files and our uh, Metabot files. We also copied that DAT file. And specifically in the documentation here, it references that if you are using your key store as express mode or the default mode, then that will work fine. If your credential vault is configured in manual mode, you'll need to copy that file containing your master key uh, over. So I would suggest using it in express mode. If you are using manual mode though, just make sure you follow these instructions of exactly how you copy that over so that all of your credentials and uh, stored passwords and things like that for uh, devices can move over correctly. All right, I'm gonna close out of the credential. The last thing we want to do is connect our bot agent and make sure that this will work correctly. So I'm going to hit connect to my computer. This download is distributed from our control room. So the fact that this is downloading to itself is a good sign. Uh, I'd probably want to test this on another machine as well, just to make sure. But, you know, assuming you can hit the control room, okay, there shouldn't be an issue here. So we will install that momentarily as the download finalizes. And remember when I said run as admin and then I didn't do that? Well, you should do that. Okay, 
I'm going to install this for all users. That installs a service. It's the most efficient way to do this. Uh, and there it is prompting for my admin access. So ultimately it still worked, but again, good practice to always um, install as admin. All right, so that's installing. We'll hit finish. I installed it. It's detecting that installation. And we'll hit done. Uh, and then the last thing I want to do is set my device credentials. This is so the bot can be deployed to my machine. So this is my local Windows machine credentials. It's not my automation or username. This is my local um, login to Windows. Hit save changes. And now the very last thing we're going to do, notice here I can see my private directory. I'm going to create a bot in my private directory. Uh, we'll just call this hello world. And this will be our final test just to make sure that things seem like they're working in this environment. So I'm just going to do the message box here. And hit run. And this will be our way just to make sure that this uh, looks like it's working in this environment. Cool. So there's our message box. Uh, our bot, at least our development environment here for our creator is working okay. So we're good to go there. We have a successful installation of Automation 360. Now, the next step would be starting to migrate your automation or your, I'm sorry, your Automation Anywhere version 11 bots to Automation 360. We're going to have a separate video that just talks about migration, but now we have finished the video with uh, doing the migration from V11 on-prem to Automation 360 on-prem. So be sure to check out that other video so that we can show you exactly how to migrate bots and show you some tips and tricks there. But hopefully you found this video helpful if you're using V11 on-prem and plan to be using Automation 360 on-prem. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Automation Anywhere and more migration content. I'm Micah Smith. Go be great.